Welcome back to Wudong Way with another of our tutorial series. Now we're really getting into some of the movement. Yesterday we did our intro to soft movement. Today's video, like I mentioned in that one, we're gonna go through a little bit more of the actual daily practice we do for more dynamic movement, more for stance training. Something that you'll probably use more often in the videos to come in the next weeks. But if you are still finding it kind of difficult or if some of the movements contraindicated, stick to that first video. This one will be a little bit more dynamic and a lot more wider frame. So one of the biggest things with Wudang that we talk about is all of our stances are going to be very, very long, very wide, very deep, very low. So our stretching to warm up for those reflects that. So we're going to have very wide posture, very dynamic movements just to kind of get your body ready for that and get you set up for the movement and the techniques. So to start off, of course, if you have the space and the time, a good warm up going for a brisk walk, a nice jog or something like that is always really good. Something we typically do will run down the road to the tempo and come back. Um, just to kind of warm up to get a little bit of sweat going, a little bit of blood moving, and then work into these stretches. If you've gone through that first warm up that we did in yesterday's video, you can also do that as a, as a light warm up into these movements today. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into the different movement and explain it step by step so you can follow along. You don't need much space, just kind of indoors is enough. Um, but if you have some fresh air, some of you go outside, that's also really great. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is just step way out and we're going to have this really large frame stance. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to call this gombu. It's going to be in the later stances. Right now, what I want to focus on is just having the back leg straight, the back straight and having the front leg at 90 degrees. So what we do with this is we're actually just going to stretch down. And one of the things you'll see in the beginning is don't flex the knee, like don't push forward, actually sink down and just kind of stretching the back. You can put your hands on your back facing over your knee and just kind of sinking. You can do this for a count of 10. Really focus on keeping the back leg straight. If your knee starts to bend and you're doing this to try to go lower, you're not really gonna get much of a stretch. It's better to keep your legs straight and even stay a little higher and just drive down. This is gonna be better to kind of get the stretch up into the hip. If the leg is bent, then all the stretch is gonna go in the knee and you don't want your knee to be flexible. You want your knee to be stable. So straighten the knee, kind of lock the leg a little bit and stretch the hip sinking down. We can do this for a count of 10. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pivot up onto the toe the heel pointing straight up again, the leg pushed straight and then straight down stretching. This will get a little bit deeper into the hip. So we can put both hands on the lower back and sink down. For a count of 10, kind of keeping this locked, keeping it nice and stable. And if this is nice and relaxed, we can also do hands up and leaning back a few times. This one's gonna be a little bit more advanced so you can save that for later. And then we can switch sides and do the same thing. Keep a really wide frame. What we're gonna come back to with the horse stance and bow stance later is we wanna keep this coordination with the knee uh, above the ankle. So don't, don't stretch and like push forward. Going low like this actually isn't really going low. You're just kind of doing a muscle squat. For stretching, we wanna keep our posture and sink down. Okay, so it's very wide. We're not doing this forward thing, we're doing down. Okay, so again, we can do a count of 10, hop up onto the toe. Count of 10, keeping your breathing. Then we can do some stretches, look up towards the hands. And I count of 10, when you wanna come up, lean forward and bring the back leg up is the best way to come up. Okay, so we're just gonna do that before we get into our stances, going through, kind of stretch out the hips, get the knees engaged, get the lower back warmed up, and we can move on to the next ones, okay? After that, we're gonna have a horse stance stretch to open up the waist. So we're just gonna step out, weight on the heels, and then we're gonna lean forward and actually put the hands on the knees and kind of press out, okay? Leaning forward is actually gonna take weight off of the legs so you can get down a little bit lower and get a little bit more motion side to side. What we're actually gonna do is while we're sink down, try to keep this level relatively flat, press the knees open, and then we're gonna drop the head and pivot to the side, pressing the back arm straight. So we sink down, turn the body at the waist, press, and keep repeating. What you can actually do is as you go down is inhale, and then exhale over the top. Inhale, exhale over the top. And then when you come up, 
kind of straighten back to the center. Just lean over and bring the feet back together. Coming up and relax. Kind of shake out a little bit too. So then we've kind of gone through legs, thigh, hips, waist, kind of warming up everything as we go. Then we actually get into the hamstrings. We can do one where we keep that same distance as the last one and just kind of sink the body forward. And we're just going to hang downward. Kind of hold the shoulder, hold the elbows and just kind of relax down, trying to straighten the back out. What I find here is really good is that when we do this, if we actually, instead of trying to reach to the ground like this and curling the back, we actually want to reach out in front and try to straighten the back. So trying to reach out in front, you can actually put your hands out here and just kind of flex the back. I'm oh, sorry, so uh, kind of extend the back. And then relaxing down. If you touch, you can kind of bring the feet back closer and hang down. Nice and relaxed, you can do some side to side swings. And if that feels comfortable, then we can do one more where we kind of do these open up to the sides. So be a little bit more advanced and a little bit more difficult, but you can try it out if this feels comfortable. But also just spend some time doing this soft just to warm up the hamstrings and get used to pivoting from the hips. Because that's something we're going to use a lot in all the different styles, is having this kind of like stable lower body posture and motion from the waist. Okay? So what we can do now is we can come down. And while we have our hands relaxed down, we can take our opposite hand, so we can take our right hand and put it to our left foot, or our left hand and put it to our right foot. So basically with our feet flat, toes facing forward, we're going to sink down, then we're going to reach over with the right hand, grab the left foot, and twist that way, looking up, and then changing left hand to the right foot, and open up. As you change sides, what you can do first is focus on looking at the hand, kind of opening the chest. And the next thing you want to focus on is aiming for the elbow to be close to the ground. So if that feels pretty comfortable and you feel like you got a good range of mobility, is you can actually, when you grab the foot, when you pull, you're going to pull your elbow down to the ground and then twist over. Okay? So easy is just kind of straight and kind of relax and twist open. But a little bit more advanced, you can grab and sink down and then twist. You can do it on both sides. Grab, sink down, and twist. Now it gives you a really nice range of mobility. Kind of open up your hips, open up your waist, all the way side to side. Okay? So then once you come up from that, just kind of shake out a little bit and relax. I find it's really important once you do these stretches, especially when they're new, you're going to get really, really soft and maybe a little bit unbalanced. So it's nice to take a moment and repeat some of the things we did yesterday and kind of do these light squats and kind of get the muscles reactive so that way they're kind of back in the right place and a little bit more stable again. So take a moment every once in a while to do a couple of squats and get that pressure back. It's always a good idea. Okay? Uh, then once we get here, we're actually going to do a little bit of a balanced one anyway. So what we want to do is just go back to that first video when we picked our knee up and did the balancing. And now we're actually going to sink down to it, hug it with the same arm, trying to get the shoulder close and then grabbing the foot and raising the body up, okay? A couple of tricks for keeping this point as like a balance and also a stretch for the side right here is we want to stay focused on a single point. So if you can look forward in front of you and also keep your, your balance like slightly bent so you have a little bit like a suspension. That's gonna keep your balance, keep focused on one point, focus on the posture and the breathing, and it's gonna be a little bit easier to stay in this position. If you feel very wobbly, small, slow adjustments, focus on that one spot, keep this nice and stable, stand up straight, and deep breathing. If you still find it's very un like wobbly and unbalanced, you can very easily find a wall and just kind of touch it. Um, you don't need to really even hold on to it, but having it there as like a safety net is really nice because then you'll be like, oh, at any moment, if you lose your balance, you can kind of touch it with your shoulder, um, but try not to rely on it too much. This will come in time. So then we can actually change legs. We have the right leg, same thing. Cradle down to it, hug it as much as, as close as you can, squeeze the leg, and then stand straight up. Keep balanced, keep a little bit soft, 
Uh, pay attention to the breathing, keep nice and slow, calm and relaxed, do a set of 20 or so, slow counts. And just try to keep this nice and stable, keep the knee close to the shoulder. Uh, when you're done, you can kind of relax, shake out a little bit. So that's going to be a really nice one to get used to balance, kind of used to soft reactions is really important. If you get up here and you've got your knee up and you start to lose balance and you react quickly, you're going to lose your balance more. Nice just to take your time, bring the leg up, if you feel this, just slow down, bend the knee, straighten back up, find your point, concentrate, relax. This should start to feel really stable. This is going to be really important when we get to the different crane qigongs and some of the standing postures. Balance is a very essential part of what we do here. So come back to this one, spend a little time with that as well. For the last movement, a little bit of just lower back kind of relaxing because now we've kind of gone through the front of the body, opened up the hips. That's going to be really important for lower back health as well. Um, but then we want to get something to just kind of uh, stretch the back and get it open because we will have some back bends coming up in the future. A lot of rotation of the trunk, so that's going to be really important in our movement as well. So what we can actually do here is we're actually just going to take our hands and place them on the lower back, kind of right in the center like the heel of the hand right by the kidneys. Uh, right where the ribs start basically. And we're just gonna do really simply, just kind of stretching back and kind of leaning forward with the body, kind of pressing in and sinking back, kind of relax, exhale. Relax back up. You should feel pretty stable because all the weight should go right into the heels. We can do a couple sets at this point. Keep it nice and steady. And then each time, what I like to do is kind of just move the heel, the hand up, one joint, and kind of keep going. And then we move up one more, and then go. As we work the hands up, the, the back bend has become less and less because we're getting into the smaller bones of the spine. So as we start from the bottom, you might find that you have a lot of range. We can kind of do this long relax. And then we move up and the hands kind of act as a stopper. And then we'll have a little bit less of a bend here. And then as we work up into the higher ones, the bend is going to be emphasized right there so it'll be less and less. And then one more. And we'll get this nice chest open. And then relax. And then when we're done with everything, we just want to shake out and relax everything. Make sure you're nice and soft at the end of the routine. That is the complete practice for today. Um, a bunch of stances for you to go back and revisit and kind of keep practicing. Make sure with these practices actually at the end of the week on Saturday, there'll be like a run through to go through all of the movement as like a practice, a follow along. But hopefully within this video, you can go through all the basics and kind of see the details and the things you might be doing right or wrong and correct those from there. Stay tuned and come back tomorrow where we're going to consolidate everything into one more practice to finish off the week. We'll see you there. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to hit subscribe, check out all the information underneath. There you can navigate to the Ways of Wudam Patreon account. And by becoming a patron, you can get access to all the main channel resources around martial arts, Taoist philosophy, even Chinese music, in group classes, live streams, one-on-one -on -one courses, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So I hope you'll go check that out, and I hope to see you there. Once more, thank you for all your support. We'll see you in the next video.